Hello, and welcome to a brand new video. Today we will be taking a trip around Cleveland's town center. So sit back, relax and enjoy the video. This popular town, like many other places, grew slowly over time. Let's have a look back into the history of Cleveland's. Thornton Cleveland's dates back more than a thousand years. Once known as Tarentum, it can be found in the Doomsday Book. Thornton means thorn tree enclosure, and Cleveland's means woodland clearing near a cliff or bank. You can still see the remains of a petrified forest on the beach today. Thousands of years ago, trees lined the river that once ran along the route of Victoria Road. Bore whole logs of ground samples show that there is geological evidence of a major river outlet here, probably the River Wire. 1643 provides the earliest reference to this bit of the filed coast that we found in our research. A Spanish vessel came ashore at Russell Beach. Both parliamentarian and royalist armies were after the prize of these lands. However, Cromwell's army had to go via Garstang and over Wyre, where his supporters were. On the other hand, Lord Derby being amongst friends, was able to march right up to Leighton Hawes and alongside the filed coast without any interference. He therefore secured the booty for the royalists. The tramway was the thing which spurred on the growth of Cleveland's. Speeded along by a man called Tom Lump who had visions of a coastal city stretching along the field. Mr. Lum was the one who employed Edwin Lutyens. He was the English architect who imaginatively adapted traditional architectural styles to the requirements of his era. He designed many English country houses, war memorials and public buildings. Lutyens drew up plans for a Cleveland's Garden City. Those plans were never realized, although some of the arts and crafts style houses were built to his designs. They still stand today. The Cleveland's coastline was wider in the 1800s. Before any sea defenses were built, spring tides speeded up coastal erosion. As you can imagine it was quite alarming to the authorities and estate companies who were losing land. Some dwellings, like Fanny Hall, crumbled and fell. The hamlet of Singleton Thorpe was reputedly to be found about a mile out into the sea off Russell Beach at Cleveland's. The name Singleton being a derivation of Shingleton. In other words habitation in a shingly place. As the years passed coastal erosion continued at Cleveland's, speeded along with the help of local people, much like today. The natural sea defense of sand, gravel and boulders were moved. In 1901, it was said that 6 to 12 carts each day were taking materials from the shore in front of Cleveland's Hydro. That was in spite of a notice displayed by the council. On April 18, 1905 a notice by the Board of Trade was printed in the London Gazette, prohibiting this removal. It wasn't until some years later that modern sea defences were built. The Abana was sailing from Liverpool to Florida, when she was caught in a storm in the Irish Sea on the 22nd of December 1894. She ended up drifting north to be wrecked off Little Bispam at 5 p.m. At low tide on the beach just off the new sea defences at Prince's Way, you can see the wooden remains of the Abana. Technically this wreck is just in the borough of Blackpool, but what's a few yards of sand between friends? The crew of the Abana and the lifeboat, including the ship's dog, were taken to the Red Lion Inn at Bispam to recover from their ordeal. The ship's bell and dog were given to the landlord of the Cleveland's Hotel, who'd raised the alarm. The ship's bell now hangs in St. Andrew's Church in Cleveland's. The last in a long line of shipwrecks on the Fylde coast was the River Dance Ferry. On the night of 31 January 2008 a storm blew it off the course of its island to Hesham sailing. It ended up on the beach at Anchor's home, close to where the Abana had wrecked, many years before. Removing the ship from the beach turned into a long saga in the history of Cleveland's. The ferry was first cut up and taken away by truck. Would you believe that, with all of that beach to choose from, the ferry had managed to land right on top of the outfall pipe and crush it. Once the ship was dismantled, the pipe under the beach needed repairing. Thornton and Cleveland's are two separate places. Cleveland's is of course the place next to the sea while Thornton is slightly inland. It's the area just off the A585 around Marsh Mill, including land towards the banks of the River Wire. The name comes from the railway station of the Preston and Wire Railway. The station was Thornton for Cleveland's. Over the years the pub has been dropped, leaving us with the name we